There's two reasons I'm making this video. For one, to help you guys out. If you guys are considering renting your house or selling your house, then watch this video. I'm gonna go over all the factors here because I am in the predicament, all right? Reason two is I want your guys' help. I'm still not sure what I'm gonna do, so that's why I broke everything down and I thought it would be best to make a video, talk it all out, and see what I come up with. So really quick, I'll talk about my numbers. I owe $320,000 on this property. I actually had it appraised and it appraised for six hundred and nine. So I've got over $350,000 of equity if I sell it. And I've only owned this property for two years, guys. It's crazy. So first I'll go over the pros and cons if I sell the property. And let me know down below what you guys think I should do. Sell it or keep it and rent it out. So first, the pro. Take advantage of the crazy, insane appreciation. The biggest appreciation hike in real estate history. So I can take advantage of that. Have cash to invest in other deals and diversify. All my money is wrapped up in this house. Say, for instance, the market goes down and I have a bad renter, then I'm gonna be losing crazy money. So all of my eggs are in one basket. If I pull out cash, say I have 350,000, I could put some in stocks, some in retirement, some in bonds, put more money in real estate, maybe put a little bit in crypto, you know, diversify a little bit. So that is a pro. Invest in my business and have less stress. I own my own business. And if I wasn't so strapped for cash, I would be less stressful. I think I would make more money in business if I can focus more on the business, you know, buy maybe more equipment that I need, pay for an editor to help me edit YouTube videos, marketing my online training business, put more money into my business and make more money essentially. This one is huge guys, no capital gains. I have lived here for two years, so I would pay zero capital gains. I get 250,000 exempt, but I could soup it up to be 350,000 by saying that I put $800,000 into the property. That would be no problem with all the upgrades. It's been right around 100,000. So I would literally walk away with 350 plus of tax-free money. I really have to bank on myself that I'm going to be responsible with that money. Another pro of selling is not being an absent landlord. So I heard that could be a nightmare. I probably would hire a property manager to manage it because I am moving to New York. So I'm going from Scottsdale across the country and I would have to leave this property here and trust a property manager that they're going to manage the property well. So let's go to the cons if I sell. I'm going to have no passive income. I'm going to have all this money, yes, but I'm not going to have, you know, money for doing nothing. I love just getting money for doing nothing and I'm not going to have that opportunity. Another con is the possibility to miss out on more appreciation. A lot of people are saying this market's going to tank. I've looked at the evidence. A lot of the evidence is just what goes up must come down. It's a lot more complicated than that, but there's a lot of evidence to show inventory is not going to go up. If inventory is not going to go up, it's likely that we could see another 5 or 10% gains, not the 20 that we've, you know, been seeing 2023. This house could go up another 50 grand or maybe even 100 grand. You never know. Another con is not having a place in Scottsdale. If you guys don't know Scottsdale, it's the most desirable place to live in Phoenix. Very nice place. And if it doesn't work out on the East Coast, then we're going to have to move back to Scottsdale and we're not going to have this property. A big reason why I'm leaving is because I have family in New York and Florida on the East Coast and I have a baby now and it's just, it's really tough raising a baby with my girlfriend with having basically zero family here. So another con to selling is yes, I sell and I have all this money, but there's going to be less buying power over the next few years. I think inflation is going to keep doing its thing and the dollar is going to continue to have less buying power. So if I do have all that money in the bank, I better hurry up and put it into some good investments. So now we're on the pros and cons of renting and guys, consider all of these. You really have to break everything down so you guys can make the best decision possible. So pros of renting, $1,500 of cash flow. They would not only pay my mortgage of $1,500, but I could rent this place out easily for $3,000 instead of paying my mortgage $1,500, I'd be getting paid $1,500. It would be a $3,000 swing right there. Will attract great renters because of this area. You really have to take your property and think about the kind of renters that you're gonna have. This is Scottsdale, so we're gonna have high income renters. We're gonna have a lot of applicants. I can pick and choose who I want to live here. Um, if you guys live in a bad part of town or something, you might expect that people aren't gonna wanna live there unless they're maybe low income. You're gonna have a little bit harder time finding good tenants. I just need $200. I take these real estate classes and I'm back on my feet, baby. This one's huge. This is a pro right here. I have a $320,000 loan that I got refinanced at 2.25. So I have a cheap, cheap loan on this house. I'm probably never going to see 2.25 again. That is just insane. This is something you have to consider. What state is your house in? Being in Arizona, this is a very landlord friendly state. So I have the leverage here as a landlord, you know, it's very easy to evict people here.
here. As far as security deposits, you have a lot of power as a landlord here. In other states, the tenants have the power. Sometimes you run into situations where they can squat and just cause you a lot of problems. Someone else is paying the mortgage. Year after year, the, you know, my loan is going down. And this one's big too, low property taxes. In Arizona, it's one of the lowest property taxes state. So in New York, it's pretty high. Even Texas, Texas is very high. You think low taxes, but Texas is actually one of the highest states as far as power. It's higher than New York. So that's something you guys have to consider as well. So of course my mic died, so let's film the rest on the iPhone. So this is the cons of renting. Risk market crashes, leaving you with smaller gains if you sell. So say for instance, I have $350,000 in profit right now. If I sell tax-free, you know, the market could crash. I could have 200,000, that's it. And then all of a sudden, you know, say it's four years down the road and I come into a point in my life where I wanna sell the property, but I'd also have to pay capital gains. If it's 15% of 200,000, 30,000, $30,000, $30, taxes so that's just something to think about i'm sure if you guys have been thinking about it you already know this but you have to own your pro or live in your property two out of the last five years so that would give me three more years to be able to sell this place tax-free repairs that i know that are coming up i did i put over you know a hundred thousand dollars into this property i know the repairs that are coming up and that's going to be plumbing i didn't replace a lot of the galvanized drainage in here or the, the piping so that's going to be popping up i don't know i could pop up tomorrow it could pop up in 10 years i don't know i'm a cheap side between five thousand and fifteen thousand dollars to do some of that plumbing work you guys have to think about all the repairs that are coming up on your renovation if you guys have a new build then it might be you know good for you to just keep the property and let renters pay it i will be getting a three thousand dollar a raise per month basically um but i'm gonna be kind of strapped for cash while i'm moving across the country i got like twenty five thousand dollars in my bank account right now but i don't have a vehicle we we are sharing a vehicle right now me and my girlfriend pretty much just talking about about stress right here it's going to be a lot less stressful moving across the country if i have four hundred thousand dollars in my account i would probably buy a, a property around two hundred thousand up there and that would still leave all of my eggs in the real estate basket if i sold the property like i said i could put it in stocks bonds a little bit in crypto and more in real estate and then just have you know that safety net i'm still undecided so if you guys want to leave me some comments you know give this video a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel that's how, why i haven't made videos in a month guys it's just every day man gym and working out is my passion i can't even work out like i'm in the gym and all i could think about is this decision so it's just such a big decision and i don't know what i'm gonna do the more input the better so thanks for watching leave some comments down below and i'll see you guys next time